show you how wrong it is according to the Bible. What's the flaw in this method? First of all, you're going to have to look at some Bible with me this morning. I hope you don't mind. What is the flaw in this method? Well, because there is little to no apparent oversight, there is an abundance of opportunity for temptation. Now, I know this from personal experience, but when parents are not involved in oversight and accountability of what their children are doing, guess what happens? Sexual intimacy every single time. Because guys, you know as well as I do, when you're that age, there's one thing that's driving your force, is there not? And that is the thought of getting this girl where you want her. And you can say, oh, but he's such a nice boy. And parents can look at that and say, well, he seems like such a nice boy. Don't let that facade fool you. Any kid who's 12 to 18 years old, the only thing that they have on their mind is one thing, period. Okay? I know that's a sobering thought. You say, no, my boyfriend, yes, your boyfriend. Okay? Unless there's something wrong with him. He's got one thing on his mind, literally. Okay? Look, I'm just warning you. Okay? I'm just warning you because... I thought that I was a unique person back in the day until I realized I wasn't so unique. All of my guy friends were the same way. Now let me tell you in Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse number 3. Let's go there this morning if you would please. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse number 3. And this is something that we as Christian parents really need to get hold of. Because the problems that we are experiencing in our society, I believe, can all be traced back to this issue. If you watch the crime in divorce rate, if you watch the homosexual activity on the rise in the United States, if you watch teen pregnancy on the rise in the United States, from about 1930 until now, it has been on a steady increase, if I showed you a graph. And guess when we started dating? Guess when dating became the acceptable way to find a spouse in the United States? In the 1930s. It all goes hand in hand. That's when we started doing that. That's when parents got out of the process and children took over the process. And you know, a child left to himself brings his mother to shame. Deuteronomy chapter 7, and look with me at verse number 3. It says, Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughters thou shalt not give unto his sons, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. Now, the context here is of less importance only because they're talking about marrying outside of Israel. But I want you to notice here the verbiage in which God speaks. He makes the assumption that the parents are giving the daughter away. That there is parental involvement in the process of finding a husband or finding a wife. Let me read it again. Neither thou shalt, uh, neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his sons. You see, it's the father's job to give the daughter away. It is not the boyfriend's job to come in and take the daughter away. It is the father's responsibility to say, I am giving you away. Hence the tradition that we have in marriages where the father stands at the front of the altar and gives his daughter away at the marriage. Now that's completely ceremonial. There is no uh, usefulness to that at all. It is totally ceremonial. But that came from, that tradition came from the very verse that I'm reading right here. That is the father's job to say, yes, you can date my daughter, or no, you cannot date my daughter. And the father had the ultimate say, yes or no. Let me illustrate this simply by having, uh, can I get Kaylee up here? And Michael, why don't you come up here, okay? Don't worry. It's not a kissing game, okay? But Michael, I want you to stand right here, okay? Is Kaylee in here? Then let me get Abby. Oh, she's lucky her then, huh? Okay? This is my daughter, okay? Obviously, Abby. Thank you, Abby, for your enthusiasm of helping me out today. Okay? If Michael is interested in my daughter, and I'm not saying he is, I have no indication that he is at all, <laughs> if Michael is an eligible suitor for my daughter, let me give you a mental illustration of how this works. I stand between him and my daughter, and in order for him to get to my daughter, he has to come through me. See, then when the time comes and I'm comfortable with it, then I say, this is my daughter, and I'm going to give her to this fine young
gentleman here, and then I step out of the way. See, this is the biblical process in which this should be done. But dating completely undermines the authority of the parents and the authority of the father, ultimately. You can sit down. Thank you very much. <laughs> they couldn't get out of here fast. <laughs> Look at Mark chapter 10 with me this morning. Mark chapter 10. Now, I know this is going to be new to some of you. But just because it's new doesn't mean it's bad. Amen. And just because it's new doesn't mean it's unbiblical. We've had literally 80 years of changing our mindset when it comes to, to uh, choosing our spouse. And let me ask you, has it had a positive effect on our culture or a negative effect on our culture? Are marriages stronger today or weaker today? Is the divorce rate higher today or lower today? See, every negative aspect of this comes out with this whole method that we're calling dating here today. Mark chapter 10 and verse number 7. It says, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. See, he's not ready to be married until he's ready to leave his father and mother. Not when he's 18, not when he's 21, but when he leaves his father and mother, that parents are in that process. Then to take the place and be given his wife by her father. Is everybody with me here this morning? Now let me share something with you. This starts at a very young age. I don't mean to sound despairing today to anybody, but if your daughter is in the range of 12 to 18 years old right now, and you step in and try to implement this process now, it's going to be very difficult for you to do that. Because they have already been infected with the mindset that mom and dad don't need to be involved with who I married. That is how we've been training them since they were 12 years old. This is a very difficult process to get that back. Now, I can help you with some counseling. I'm certainly willing to counsel anybody who wants help with that. But I'm telling you that the process is going to be very difficult. Because this whole thing that I'm talking about here starts not when they're 12, not when they're 13, not when they're 16 or 18. This whole process starts when they're about 2, 3, or 4, or 5 years old. That's when you start training your children with this mindset. Amen? Amen. Now let me share something with you. I recently took my daughters out on what I'll call a daddy date. Okay? And I do this often, probably about once or every two months or something like that. I take them out, and man, I treat my girls like royalty when we go out, okay? We go to a very nice restaurant. We go downtown Minneapolis. We get a car that drives us around. We go to the top of the Fauché Tower. I mean, we go all out, okay? I talked about that on my radio show once, what I do with my daughters. You would not believe, I thought I would get positive feedback from them. You would not believe the negative feedback that I got. And you know who it came from? Not men. Women. These women wrote emails to me, tearing me up one side and down the other. Oh, you're spoiling your girl. How dare you treat your girls that well? You just treat them like little princesses and little queens. Right? First of all, I do not spoil my girls. Last summer, I made them work all summer long to buy a doll for themselves. I wasn't going to pay for it. I do not spoil my girls. And I wrote them back. It's very interesting. I put some feelers out there to these women who wrote in who were all upset that I would treat my daughters like princesses and queens. Okay? And I put some feelers out there, and I said, right, in, a, in a sideways way, trying to draw some information out without them knowing I was drawing the information out, I asked them essentially, how did your father treat you? Mm -hmm. Amen. There's the problem. Their dads didn't treat them. Either that or their dads treated them extremely poorly. You know what we have a case of here? We have not a case of somebody watching out for me spoiling my girls. We have a case of envy. Mm -hmm. These girls are envy 